Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to second lecture on tool and die design. In the first lecture, I, I gave you a broader idea about this course, what this course is about, what this course focuses on, and a couple of uh, basic terminology related to this course was also discussed. So we are on module zero, we are discussing basics. So in this lecture, I will very quickly uh, review manufacturing processes that you have already studied in detail. And here I would like to link different modules and different topics that we will discuss of course with, with the basic manufacturing processes. That is uh, which type of tooling is used for which types of basic processes. Which module we will be discussing that. So here we will review basic manufacturing processes that you have already discussed in semester two and semester four. And specifically, we would like to identify and list down different tools, dies, and molds that are used in each process. And I would like to encourage you to focus on the configuration of dies and molds in different processes. So these are three major prerequisites for this course. And the most important is first one, engineering drawing and CAD. We will review some very basics of uh, drawing in the next lecture, inshallah. And manufacturing processes, especially machining processes are another imp uh, important prerequisite for this course. And of course, you do need some knowledge of engineering materials as well, because specifying materials is an integral part of any design. So you can see that we can um, classify the manufacturing processes in, in different categories. And we saw this taxonomy repeatedly in our manufacturing process course. So for the sake of simplicity, I will be focusing more on these four types of manufacturing processes in this uh, discussion, solidification processes, deformation processes, particulate processing and material removal processes. And briefly, we will see welding in the end. But again, here my focus will not be on the process itself, but the tooling that each of these processes uses. So what is manufacturing? It is conversion of starting material into a semi-finished or finished part so generally there is some application of physical or chemical processes and there is some change in the geometry property and or appearance of the starting material. So we have a starting material, we make the finished part and we need some components of the manufacturing system to convert this material into this finished part. So we need a machinery that I called a machine tool or general purpose machine we need a tooling that is special purpose tool. We need some source of power. We need labor and so on. Now the finished part can be checked in different ways. So there are different ways to check the conformance of the finished part to design specifications. And one of the ways is to use different types of gauges. And we will discuss the design of different type of uh, inspection tooling including uh, different types of gauges in module four after midterm. So again, we will be focusing specifically on these four uh, shaping processes. And once again, I would like to encourage you to identify tools or tooling, especially dies and molds in different processes. All solidification processes. Here the starting material is a heated uh, liquid and it is poured or forced to flow into a mold cavity where it cools and solidifies taking a solid shape that is the same as the cavity. Two examples are casting in the case of metals and injection molding for plastics and glasses. So this is a typical sand casting mold it has different parts, upper part is a cope, the lower is a drag, then there is a parting line in between. 
And of course, there are other components like riser, sprue, runner, and gates, and so on. So we discussed the design aspects for a sand casting mold in second semester. Uh, so I won't be going into details here. Another type of solidification process for metals is die casting. So the sand casting has a mold that is made up of sand. The major uh, composition is uh, comprising sand, but here in the case of die casting, we have a metallic mold or metallic die. We won't be directly discussing the design of die casting dies, but the design of these dies is very similar, technically very similar to the design of injection mold. We will be discussing injection uh, mold design in the last module, although there are many differences because the uh, starting material here is metal and in injection molding and that is a plastic. But the shape and the parts of the die or the mold are very similar in both processes. So you can get a basic idea of the parts of a die casting die and design parameters once we will be discussing the design of injection mold. So just for uh, a food for thought, I asked you to list down similarities and differences between sand casting mold and a die casting mold, just an additional question. So injection molding, as I just mentioned, is very similar to die casting in process schematic. Here starting material is plastic. It is melted and injected into a mold and then it is solidified there to make the final part. We just saw the example of a bucket in the previous lecture. Here we saw that the injection mold comprises two parts. So there is a core that imparts internal features to the part and then, then there is a cavity that imparts external features. And of course, there is a core plate. Uh, the core is a part of and a cavity plate. And the cavity is uh, machined on uh, and of course, there are many other parts of uh, an injection mold as well. Uh, we will discuss uh, the details of the design of injection mold in module five. Uh, but just remember that injection mold or die casting die are example of production tooling. Here I, uh, I'm not going into too many details. Uh, then we have powder metallurgy or powder particulate processing. Here the starting material is powder. Different powders are generally mixed together. Some, some lubricants are also mixed. Uh, so there is a mixing chamber, then that powder is pressed. Sorry, uh, it is filled in, in, in this schematic. And then of course that powder is pressed between two components of the tooling. Upper is a punch, the lower is a die. And depending upon the shape of punch and die, we get the required shape. And the finished part is then centered to, to improve the mechanical properties. Now we won't be discussing the design of dies for powder metallurgy, but some of the features are similar to uh, some other dies like forging dies or, or stamping dies, because these are all uh, having same um, uh, configuration of the tooling for production. Third type of uh, manufacturing processes or shaping processes, formation uh, processes. So here we have uh, rolling, forging, and extrusion. Just for the sake of example, we 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 look at uh, forging. So there are two types of forging open die and closed die, the closed die forging further has two types, impression die forging and flashless forging. Here is just an example of a three station forging die. So this is first station, second station and third station because this is a deformation process. So we cannot make the final shape in one go. So we need three steps. The design of forging die requires a lot of trial and error. And uh, you need a lot of experience to design these dies. So we won't be discussing directly the design of forging dies as well. And 
same is true about extrusion dies. So this is an example of an extrusion die. The extrusion process is used to make the parts of uniform cross section throughout the length. Yet another question to refresh your manufacturing process knowledge. How does metal extrusion differ from casting, forging, and particulate processing? Another type of uh, uh, deformation processes are stamping processes or sheet metal processes. Uh, they have two categories. The first category is the shearing processes or cutting processes. Two common examples of uh, shearing or cutting processes are blanking and piercing. We will discuss the technicalities later, but we need a punch as we saw in the last lecture that in the case of stamping operations, we need a punch and we need a die. So these are two uh, most important parts of tooling for stamping operations. But remember that there are other parts of tooling for sheet metal operations, depending upon the type of operation that we are performing one shown in this figure is a stripper, uh, but uh, there are other parts of, uh, of uh, production tooling for stamping operations, but almost always required are a punch and a die. So these are the components of, of a you know, production tooling for sheet metal blanking. Second category of uh, sh sheet metal operations or stamping operation is uh, the shaping processes. The first one was the cutting processes. One example of shaping processes in uh, stamping is bending, where we have a straight blank that is bent at some angle. Yet another example is sheet metal drawing or deep drawing. So we have a starting blank that is drawn into the die. And the design of this type of uh, tooling, that is the stamping dies, is a part of this course. And we will discuss it in module four in detail. The fourth category of uh, shaping processes are material removal processes. These are subtractive processes where we remove the material from the starting material. And that is generally a rod or some circular work piece in the case of a lathe or it could have a different shape for other processes. Uh, we can classify these uh, material removal or uh, uh, machining processes into three categories. The first category is where the tool rotates, the cutting tool rotates. So these machines could be vertical or horizontal machines. The examples of vertical machines are drill press and vertical milling machines. And the examples of horizontal machines are horizontal milling machines and horizontal boring machines. So orientation of the tool could be vertical or horizontal, but the tool rotates, the cutting tool rotates. The second category of the machining processes is where workpiece rotates. So these machines could be vertical or horizontal. So that this, the vertical or horizontal is about the axis of the, of the, of the machine that we are talking about. For example, in this case, we were talking about the axis of the cutter. So that was vertical uh, in this case and the axis of the cutter was uh, horizontal in, in these two cases. So for example, in the case of uh, uh, horizontal machines, we have lathes. So here the axis of the workpiece is horizontal, right? Or in the case of uh, multiple spindle lathe, the axis of the workpiece is horizontal. But in these two machines, vertical boring machines or vertical turret lathe, the axis of the workpiece is vertical. And the third category of the machining processes is where tool or workpiece, either of these two translates. So in the case of shaper, the cutting tool translates. In the case of planer, the workpiece translates. 
and in the case of broach the cutting tool translates so it moves in the linear direction even to to simplify it further the three types of machining processes are most common uh, the turning the milling and uh, the drilling so so the turning drilling and milling so again the turning drilling and the last two are milling operations so the point i want to emphasize here is that one of the most important requirements for any machining process is to hold the workpiece in the desired orientation so that the uh, so that it doesn't move during machining process it can withstand the forces that are acting on it so we need fixtures and jigs in order to to achieve this goal so we will design uh, we, we will discuss the design of jigs and fixtures in module 1 and as you saw uh, here as well and we saw in the last lecture as well that drilling is one of the most common uh, operations and for making holes in large quantity we need to to properly guide the drill at the required position so we do need a uh, jigs in this specific case and you also observe that in every machining operation we require a cutter so cutters could be single point cutters or multiple point cutters so we will briefly discuss the design of cutting tools in module 2 again a food for thought what is the relationship between machining and casting and forging finally we have assembly operations there are many types of assembly operations so we have welding brazing soldering adhesive bonding and one of the most common is uh, the welding process and i do plan that we will briefly discuss the design of welding fixtures now these fixtures are very different in some aspects from machining fixtures but the common aspect in both types of fixtures is to hold the workpiece in the required orientation during the operation so whether the operation is machining or welding we have to hold the workpiece in the required position so that it doesn't move during uh, uh, the operation Uh, so that the operation can be properly performed so that is why they are called fixtures so i hope we will discuss at least one example of a welding fixture in our course so in this lecture we very quickly and briefly saw the use of tools dies and molds in different operations they are an integral part of manufacturing processes to get the desired shape and design and manufacture of these tools dies and molds for each process calls for specific considerations and challenges and understanding these requirements is the first step in designing and subsequently making these tools dies and molds and a large number of factors such as end products material shape its desired functional properties have to be considered in successful design and manufacture so we very quickly so Uh, where different types of production tooling is used in a in a manufacturing system 